Good afternoon. Um, hi there. As Mike said, I'm Simon Lambert. I'm the editor of thisismoney.co.uk um, and uh, delighted to be here today speaking to you all. Um, so today I'm going to talk about how to be a smarter pension investor and avoid the pitfalls. So what's this? What is the biggest threat to your retirement in the brave new world of pensions freedom? Well, thanks to a rather famous line from our former pensions minister, who's actually going to be speaking here later on today, um, it's come to be epitomised by this, a Lamborghini. The concern is that basically, after saving hard for your retirement, you'll get your hands on this new free access to your pension, and you'll go off and fritter it away. Now, this has been used by the pensions industry, it's been used by uh, us in the media, it's been used by everyone as, as the real threat to your retirement. But the thing is, I don't think that it is. I mean, and that's not only for the fact that, firstly, most people couldn't afford to buy a Lamborghini Countach, and that they're also going up in value at the moment, so they've actually proved to be quite good investments. Um, <laughs> It's to do with the fact that I don't think that people who have saved hard for their retirement and been prudent all through their working life are suddenly going to lose the plot and go and blow the lot. So what are the real pension traps? Well, these are the what I think they are. The tax man, the con man, and our own human nature. Our, our ability to be forever blowing bubbles and chasing them down. So before I talk about those... I suppose I should really talk about pension freedom because, I mean, a lot of people here will be uh, still investing for retirement, building up money. Some of you will be approaching retirement. Some of you will be already retired and wondering what on earth you do with this, this new situation. And pension freedom basically gives you the opportunity to invest, to spend, to take your pension pot as you wish from a defined contribution pension. Um, with anybody, you could also move your defined benefit pension, your final salary scheme, across to a defined contribution scheme and do this. But I would be very, very, very wary about doing that and remember what you're giving up. So what does pension freedom offer you? Well, it offers you the chance to make your pension fit your life. So you might want to spend more time with your grandchildren. You might want to learn to take up a new hobby. Maybe you've already, always fancied scuba diving. Um, you might want to go buy that little classic car. That one's a little bit more affordable than the Lamborghini. You might want to make part of your, your retirement actually the hobby of doing one of those cars up. You might want to do something completely different. The choice is essentially yours. So the other options that it gives you is you can continue to grow your wealth. You can keep your pension invested. You can use drawdown or lump sums to take the money as you want. And hopefully the power of the stock market to deliver returns over time will help to grow your wealth. You can use it to pass on an inheritance now or later. Um, it, it's now... If you will face an inheritance tax liability, it could be favourable to keep more money in your pension. Or you could take some money out and you could give it to the children, to the grandchildren now. I'm sure that there'll be many people in this room who've been tapped up for house deposits, for example. Um, you can enjoy your money. You can lead a richer retirement. This is, this is really good news. This is overwhelmingly good news. So... When I tell you about the traps and the risks in a minute, remember, keep, keep your eye on the prize, so to speak. So what are those traps? Well, this is the one that I worry about the most, actually. That's the con man. That picture there is Leonardo DiCaprio playing Jordan Belfort in the film The Wolf of Wall Street. He was in charge of an investment firm called Stratton Oakmont, except it wasn't really an investment firm. It was a boiler room. They'd call people up, ramp up shares tell them to buy them. It was an opportunity that was too good to be true and people fell for it and they, and they would buy them. Now, the thing about con men and fraudsters is that they spot opportunities and the fact that you can get your hands on your pension now um, or you might have taken it out and put it into a bank account or you've got it there in your investment account you can take that money out means that you're an opportunity for them. And the thing about fraudsters is they are convincing, they are cunning and they know the buttons to press. And this film is based on a true story. Um, it happened some time ago. But this kind of thing is going on in the UK every single day. You know, too, all too often we do get emails or letters from readers who say that they've been completely duped by someone. So be careful. No reputable firm, no reputable financial firm will cold call you, for example. 
be, be very wary of those sort of things that come with, you know, outsized returns, the investments that are too tempting to be true. And also watch out for those things that maybe your friends and family told you about, or the man down the pub. Oh, yeah, I've got this great opportunity. Yeah, there's this guy who's got this investment scheme. Oh, I've made loads of money. Just be really careful with that stuff. The next trap, the tax trap. And this, again, is a concern because with the pension freedom rules, what happens is with your pension, you can either take your 25% tax-free lump sum, as you previously could, and then the rest of your money will be taxed, or you could take out multiple lump sums, and the first 25% of those multiple lump sums will be tax-free. But the rest of the money will be added to your income to decide your tax rate. Now, to some people, to many people, I'm tell it, stating the obvious here, I'm telling you something you already know. But there is a real risk from what we've seen from our readers that people just don't understand this. They take £40,000 out of their pension, it's added to their income of, say, £20,000 that year, and all of a sudden it pushes them up the tax bracket and they say 40% of it eaten away. If you've got a big pension, it could be 45%. Um, there's the risk that, say, for example, the year that you retire, in the year that you retire, you'll have been earning a salary. Well, if you suddenly take a load of pension money out of your pension in that year, then it will be added to your salary to decide your income for that tax year. And the problem is, is that if you do this and you suddenly get a statement or a tax bill and you go, oh no, what have I done here? You can't phone up HMRC and say to them, look, I'm really sorry, I made a mistake. Could you give me my money back? Can I just unwind all of this? I put it back in the pension. I won't take all that money. I won't spend it. They won't do that. They're not that helpful, and they're not even allowed to either. It's not just that they're unhelpful. Um, and the, the, the risk here is when people are cashing in their pension, taking that big lump sum to spend it on something. Or also, when I was talking on the panel earlier, there was the question asked about buy to let. And when these, when these reforms were first flagged, there was a lot of talk that a lot of this money might go into property. And the risk there is that in order to take out enough money to get the deposit on a property, because properties are expensive, is that you will be bumping yourself up those tax brackets if you pull all that money out in one go. And um, I don't think anybody really wants to lose 40% of the money that they take out of their pension. And then there's the most dangerous trap of all, human nature. This quote here is from um, Warren Buffett in his latest annual letter to shareholders. And he's quoting Ben Graham, the famous investor, himself quoting William Shakespeare. The fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves. We are basically our own worst enemy, as was referred to in the presentation before this. Human nature means that we are always chasing bubbles. We're chasing the latest hot thing. We have, we, there are many, many studies that have been documented over the years, the fact that we have a terrible tendency to buy at the top and sell at the bottom. Um, we, we hear a great story. So I would say just learn a bit about investing behavior. Look at some of these things. Look at the common traps that people fall into. And there's two things in very recent memory that you can look at to, um, to understand this. There was the dot-com boom, and there was the uh, US property boom and mortgage boom that led to the financial crisis. Now, with the benefit of hindsight, it's easy to look back at those and go, that was madness. What on earth were people doing? Why were people doing this stuff? Why were they buying these things? Um, why was the, those prices being chased up? And why didn't people realize? Why did people keep buying these things? But they did, and that's what happens. So you've got to be careful about that. That picture there is a Chinese dragon. I don't know whether many of you know about this at the moment, but the Chinese stock market has gone nuts. It is, has absolutely rocketed over the last year, and there's all kinds of behavior going on there that is very similar to that sort of dot-com boom era. In fact, I've actually I've got an investment trust, the uh, Fidelity China Special Situations. I've got an investment in that investment trust. It's up 50% in a year, um, which is spectacular. But then you look at what's going on there, and you think, you know, what are the reasons behind this? There are companies at the moment, which manufacturing companies, which are essentially stopping what they're doing in China and taking that money and investing it in the stock market instead because they've decided they can get a better return by doing that. Um, that's a bit crazy. So that's not to say don't invest in China. I've still got that investment trust, but it's a small part of my portfolio because at the back of my mind, there's this knowledge that something crazy might be going on there. So how to be a part smarter pension investor? Um, unfortunately, this isn't the bit of the presentation 
where I tell you exactly what you should be doing and exactly what you should be investing in and deliver some form of magic bullet. Because the thing about being a smarter pension investor is that that's not what it's about, hunting for those tips, those magic bullets, because they don't exist, really. It's about looking at yourself, looking at investing behaviour, and learning to understand how you should do things and how you should evaluate things. So, as I mentioned before, investing behaviour is a really important one. Um, look at what people do. Look at the mistakes people make. Re read up on it. There's a countless good books out there that you can read. Um, there are a number of good websites. This is money included. I'd encourage you to go there. Read our investing section and our DIY investing section. Um, and keep it simple and don't rush in. People have this, this tendency to, they, suffer, they can suffer from inertia, but they can also just jump in. And they can, they can follow things that are way too complicated. Look at, look at all the trouble those things have got us into over the years. Also, think about what kind of investor you are. How much risk can you take? What's your time horizon? How long do you have to invest? What would, how would you feel if you opened up your investing account tomorrow and it had fallen by 20%, 25%. If that would be a deeply concerning situation to you and potentially derail your retirement, then you probably need to try and invest in some safer assets. If you've actually got many, many years to retirement, like the fortunate position that I find myself in, you can afford to take more risk because not only do you have the time to make that money back, but you have the time to pay more money into your pension. Um, you, many, many years that you can keep paying that money in and keep building it up. Also, how much work do you want to put into your pension? This is something that's really important to consider because um, I'm talking to an engaged audience here who have come on a Saturday to listen to people talk about how to get a richer retirement. So I'm presuming that you're willing to put some work into it. Um, but you might not want to be constantly looking at your portfolio. And in actual fact, constantly looking at your portfolio is bad news. You probably need to evaluate it every six months, every year. But maybe you don't want to be doing that. You don't want to be chopping and changing investments. You want something that will do it all for you or that will take a lot of the heat off you down the line. So think about what you want, and how much work you want to put in. Also consider where you invest. It's not just about what you invest in. It's about the platforms and the companies that you use because they all have different charges and different fees and those charges and fees can eat up quite a lot of your retirement and you, many of you will have read about some of the, the long-term insurance companies refusing to give people their money at the moment. Um, there are places out there that really, unlike those people, they've there's places out there that have embraced pensions freedom and the whole new aspect. Look at those places. Also, look for quality and value. I think if there's one general rule about investing that has paid off over time, it's don't buy expensive stuff. And use the power of dividends. Whether you're using them to draw an income from your investments or whether you're using them to build up your investments over time. Look at the statistics of how much more you'd get if you reinvested your dividends over the years from the stock market rather than just taking that money and spending it. It makes a huge difference. So, some different ways to invest. Well, there's individual shares. Now, you could get lucky investing in individual shares. You could get the next Google. Or you might buy HMV, the next HMV, and you might hold on to a share that's slowly going down, slowly going down, slowly going down, waiting for it to come back up. And eventually the company goes bust. And HMV looked very attractive at one point. It had a very high dividend. The dividend was nearly 10%. And 10 years ago, someone probably would have told you that Google was a much riskier investment and HMV was the safer, steady investment. So what you need to do is you need to commit the time and effort needed. Learn how to look at fundamentals of shares. Learn how to read a company report. Listen to ideas. Tips aren't all bad, but do your own research. And also get a properly balanced portfolio and spread risk. If you are investing in shares, you need to have a portfolio of at least 15 shares. And you also need to make sure that your portfolio isn't invested just in a lot of shares that all do the same thing. What actually tends to happen is rather than having those 15, 20, 30 shares that you might need, most people hold about five and about three of them all do the same thing. So they all go up together and they all go down together. Funds are the obvious place that most people will think of investing. Um, they, they'll spread your risk for you. An active fund manager will be there taking the decisions for you so you don't need to worry about the fact that you've only bought five shares and three of them do exactly the same thing. 
Um, but it costs money. And a good active fund manager can be worth paying for. But make sure you are paying for a good one. Because the average fund manager doesn't beat the market. Good ones do, but it takes a long time to work out who they are. Look at people who've got a clear and well-defined strategy that works, that can explain it simply, and that do take the time to explain it simply to their investors, not try and baffle you with science or tell you this is so difficult that you couldn't possibly ever do it yourself. People like Neil Woodford there, or Nick Train, who runs Finsbury Growth and Income Trust, th these are people who have clearly articulated investing strategies and have proven over time that they do work. Also, consider investment trusts as well, not just funds. Um, the active fund management industry is where the big money is, and they spend a lot of money promoting themselves to investors. Investment trusts don't do that so much. But investment trusts are very good. The advantage of an investment trust is that there is an element where it has shares traded on the market and it has the assets it holds. And those two prices can be different, so you could be at a discount or a premium. But what that also means is that when the market slumps and investors are rushing to pull their money out, that investment trust isn't forced to sell at a price that it doesn't want to sell at. Also, when money's rushing in, and if things are going a bit crazy, they're not forced to go buy shares at a price that's too expensive. They can also hold back some of the income from dividends in the good times to help pay those dividends in the bad times. So they're less, they can be less likely to cut that dividend. In fact, there are many investment trusts, a list of them called the Dividend Heroes, who have this very long history of raising their dividend every single year. And they can be a very good investment for retirement, I think. Um, passive investing as well. Don't discount this. You know, you, the, the active fund management industry is the one that spends all the money promoting their products to you and trying to sell their products to you. But many fund managers don't beat the market. Some do, but many don't. A passive fund will take a tracker, it will spread your money around the place, it will do that work for you of diversifying, but the, the costs will be lower. And you don't run the risk of picking the dud manager, the manager who doesn't beat the market, doesn't just track the market, but loses a lot more than the market. They spread your risk and they offer low-cost investing, and there are some passive funds out there that will do it all for you. Um, funds like the Vanguard Life Strategy Funds that will invest in shares and bonds and property. And there are other investments. Um, we had a talk earlier from Nick from Nutmeg. There was the talk from Birthstar about target date funds. Think about some of these things as well. So the tips to be a smarter pension investor. Well, I think maybe some of you will have listened to this and thought, well, what he's just told me wasn't complicated enough. Um, but if there's one thing that I've learned from my time as working at This Is Money, from my time as, a, as an investor myself, and from, my, from the, the privileged time that I get to speak to a lot of people who are professional investors and work in the investment industry, and from all the reading I've done and all the things I've learned, it is that keeping it simple is the route to investing success. Look at all the trouble that all those too clever by half investments have got us into over the years. Think about stuff that's simple. If you don't understand it, don't invest in it. So know your goals and be realistic. Know what you want to do and then be realistic about your chance of getting there. I know what I want to do. I'd like to retire with about three or four million pounds. But if I'm realistic, I don't think that I'm going to get there. So I need to know my goal and then I need to be realistic about how I'm going to get there. Do your research and don't panic buy. So do your research first. Don't panic buy first and then do your research, which is what quite often happens. You read something in the paper, that sounds like a great idea, you rush in, buy it, it goes down, you panic, you go look into it a bit more and you think, why on earth did I ever buy that? Also consider both where and how you invest. Not just what you're investing in, but how you're doing it and the platforms that you're using. Get a properly balanced portfolio and spread your risk. So make sure that you are investing across the spectrum of the investing universe and you're not going to suddenly get sideswiped when that China market does suddenly fall because everybody wakes up and realises that stopping manufacturing widgets or whatever you do to go punt your company money on the stock market is not a wise plan. And don't buy expensive stuff. This is another great rule from investing. You know, be careful about stuff that looks very expensive at any given time and that will be the key to you avoiding those bubbles. Um, and watch out for the traps that I mentioned earlier. Um, and my final point would be, come to This Is Money, come
come and read the site. We've got lots of guides. We, we've got news. We explain what it means to you. And basically, we're there to try and help you save money and make money. And I wish you all the happiest and richest retirement anyone could ever have. Thank you very much. <laughs>